Hi, welcome to my channel. Today we will configure Postfix to receive mail from the clients on 587 port instead of 25 port. 587 is the mail submission port. We are used to configure the outgoing mail server at the mail clients with 25 port. But we need to avoid this practice because if any user's PC got infected from the client's network, it can send spam mail through the server's 25 port because server trusts its own clients. If we allow client's network to relay mail through 25 port of our server, it will be a huge risk. That's why most of the ISP blocks outgoing 25 port from the client's network. Spam bots targets 25 port of the server from the allowed network. So best practice is to block SMTP connection from the clients to the 25 port of the server and allow 587 port for mail sending. In this video, first we will enable submission or 587 port on the server. Then we will configure SSL authentication so that users get authenticated before grants relay permission. And after that, we will encrypt the connection with TLS so that all communication between clients PC and the mail server occurs within the encrypted channel. If you can configure like this, spreading spam from the user's network will drastically reduce. So let's start the configuration. Here we are at our server. Let's check the host name mailer.mailserverguru.com. Okay, if you check the ports, we have 25 port enabled. Before configuring the server, let's check our client. This is the pc1.mailserverguru.com and we have configured Outlook for the user Munna at mailserverguru.com and the user's outgoing mail server is the mailer.mailserverguru.com. This is the same like the incoming server. So we have a single server. We are using this server for incoming and outgoing both and we have configured the SMTP port. Here you can see on the advanced setting 25 port. So with this setting, we can send and receive mail without any problem. You can check the log. This is a test mail from Munna to Munna. And if we hit the send receive now, it calls the Microsoft Outlook test message. So the SMTP communication from the client's PC to the mail server is 100% okay. We have no problem with that. Now we need to change the configuration. We need to put the 587 port here. Before mentioning the port here, let's configure the server first. Now, if we check the listening ports, we can see that only 25 port is listening. So there is no 587 port. So to enable 587 port, we need to go to the master.cf file and we need to enable the submission here. So we are enabling 587 port or the submission port. Let's restart the post fix. Now if we check the ports, we can see that our 587 is listening. So now if we configure our mail clients with 587 port instead, the 25 port. Let's test the account. Incoming port is okay and send test email message. It can send through the 587. No problem. Now, if we hit send and receive, we should get two mail. Yes, here you get the two test messages from Microsoft Outlook. So we have successfully enabled 587 port, but this is not the best practice. We need to tighten the uh, configuration from the mail client. Let's enable the SASL authentication for this client. Now, if we uh, describe SASL authentication, SASL authentication means before we send mail, 
we need to click here that my outgoing server SMTP requires authentication. That means mail client will connect to the SMTP server with the 587 port. But before the uh, mail server allows this client for mail sending, it will check the username and password that the mail client or the mail user is a legitimate user. Normally, we used to uh, check the username and password when we receive mail, when we download mail from the uh, pop IMAP server but it is SMTP authentication. Before we are sending mail to the SMTP server, SMTP server itself will check the username and password before it uh, grants the relay permission uh, for the clients. So let's uh, install the SSL authentication. So to install the SSL, uh, we need to install this package. Yam install Cyrus SSL, devil and SSL plane. Okay, now we will get the command SSL, SSL of D, SSL plus WD, all these commands will be available. Now we can check what uh, SSLs are compiled with the postfix. Cyrus SSL is used with the SMTP and Dove code SSL implementation is used with the Dove code. So we will use the Cyrus SSL here. Now let's go to etc ssl to smtpd conf password check method is ssl of t and the mechanism list will be plain in login we don't need to change anything here and after that we need to go to the etc postfix master.cf and we need to enable the syslog name postfix submission TLS security we will enable it later. SMTP SSL auth enable yes. And after that, we need to put some other option. SMTP SSL security option no anonymous. This means the SSL will not allow the anonymous authentication mechanism. And broken SSL auth clients is actually for the old SMTP client or old mail clients uh, software now smtp reject unlisted recipients no this is not mandatory and these mua configurations are not configured on the postfix so we can remove those we can remove the last one also but we need to enable this one smtp recipient restriction permit ssl authenticated permit ssl authenticated means the only ssl authenticated users will be permitted to send mail through the 587 port and rest of the users will be rejected so here the SSL authentication is a must. So let's save it. Now systemctl restart SSL auth d and restart also postfix. So now if we check the outgoing SMTP uh, connection with the 587 but we still didn't uh, enable the outgoing server authentication option here. With this configuration, if we try to send mail, it will give us error message that send test message, the server respond 554 rejects because access denied because it is not yet SSL authenticated. So we have to go to the more option and outgoing server and we have to click this my outgoing server SMTP require authentication and 587 port so now before sending mail it will check the username and password on the server now we can see that it, it can uh, successfully send the mail if we see the log you can see here the client IP and this is the SSL method login and SSL username is Munna. So this client is authenticated through the SSL and the mail is received and it's delivered to the mailbox. So now if we check the mail, we should receive the test message. So we have uh, successfully done the second part, enabling the SASL with the 587 port. We can leave the configuration like this, only enabling the submission port with the SSL authentication. But 
when we enable the SSL authentication, it shows us that authentication configuration will be sent from the Outlook to the mail server as a plain authentication mechanism. So username and password will be seen. So now we should encrypt the communication from the uh, mail clients to the server. So we have to enable the TLS. So let's start configuring the TLS on the server. We have many ways to install SSL certificate on the Linux system. But on the CentOS, uh, we can install the SSL uh, certificate with the uh, crypto utils package. So let's install the crypto utils first. So we have already installed the crypto utils package. Now to generate the key pair and SSL certificate, uh, we can give the gen key command with 365 and this certificate will be created for the mailer.mailserverguru.com. Let's hit enter. So the key will be stored in, this is the private key and this is the certificate. It will be uh, stored in the etcpki tls directory. Click next. 2048 bit key size. Click next. It will take some time to generate random bits. Generating CSR. I don't need a CSR right now. And protecting your private key. I don't need to encrypt the private key. Click next. Now we need to enter the certificate details. Country BD, state or province name is the Dhaka, locality name, organization name, department. Mail client will use this fully qualified domain name to connect to this server. That's why this common name is the most important here to generate the SSL certificate. Now the certificate and the private key is created. Now if we see, this is the private key and on the search directory, this is the certificate. So now let's go to the master.cf file to configure the certificate and other TLS parameters. Now let's go to the to see postfix master.cf now we need to input the TLS details we are providing the uh, TLS information here under the submission context we are not giving the information on the main.cf file because uh, that will be used by all SMTPT daemon but we want this TLS encryption and uh, the SSL to work under the submission context now let's uh, describe these settings first smtpd tls security level encrypt this means we are enforcing tls encryption for the clients client must use tls encryption to communicate with the submission port next smtpd tls key file this is the private key file and smtpd tls cert file this is the certificate file smtpd tls log level one this will log tls sessions to the postfix mail log setting to level 0 turns off uh, TLS logging and level 2 may be used for debugging purpose SMTPD TLS session cache timeout 3600 seconds this means server cache TLS session keys for one hour because negotiating TLS session key for each connection is costly in terms of CPU and bandwidth so it caches TLS session keys for one hour SMTPD TLS session cache database this is a DB file TLS stores sessions in this session cache database which it can repeatedly use. TLS session creation is CPU and bandwidth intensive. TLS can resume session from this database. TLS random source, dev, urandom. To generate session key, TLS needs to generate unpredictable numbers. TLS manager does this with pseudo number generator program. Dev urandom, this is a device file and it's used as an entropy source for the random number generator program. TLS random exchange name. This PRNG exchange file is a persistent exchange file. The TLS manager saves the random number generator state to this file. And finally, SMTPD TLS auth only equal to yes 
This setting forces the use of TLS for SSL authentication and will not allow plain text authentication to occur unless a SSL or TLS session has been established. So SSL authentication must use TLS before grants relay permission to the clients. So let's save the configuration. And restart postfix. Now let's go to the client and we need to change the settings here. Outgoing server record authentication. We need to check this. This is must and 587 with the TLS encryption. If you do not provide TLS, let's see what happens. You can see none of the authentication methods support. That means we need to enable the TLS and SSL will work in that case. Now, if we hit test account, now it provides the certificate. This is the first time we can see uh, the certificate appears. So, view the certificate. This is for mailer.mailservergo.com. This is for one year install the certificate so it imports do you want to use this server yes test mail is successful now if you see on the log it says the anonymous tls connection established with tls version 1 and also the ssl login and ssl username so ssl and tls both are working fine so that means now our SSL username and password, uh, though you are using the plain login, but it will encrypt through the TLS. So we are done configuring the SSL authentication with a submission port and TLS encryption also working fine. So we have successfully tested the uh, Postfix submission port with SSL and TLS encryption enabled. So thank you for being with me and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.